Welcome back. With countless new modern skyscrapers popping up all over the country, China is becoming the place where wild architectural dreams can come true. But is China's architecture industry going in the right direction? In this edition of Designing the Future, a reporter Li Chuyuan digs deep to find out what the real costs behind the skyscraper building boom are. Nothing can stop China's skyscrapers from getting higher. As the iconic Shanghai Tower is being constructed in the city's Manhattan-like district of Pudong, Shanghai is having another race to the sky. China's construction boom continues to carry on. Now the country counts for 53 percent of the world's skyscrapers that are under construction. These super high-rise buildings in China are not only increasing in number, their height is also constantly breaking records. But is height a barometer of boom? Skyscrapers might be a symbol of prosperity and modernization for some, but for economists, the high-rise building boom carries exactly the opposite message. Economist Andrew Lawrence Skyscraper Index has shown that the world's tallest buildings have risen on the eve of economic downturns. If so, will China fulfill this prophecy once again? Timing is everything. You have probably heard of the Lawrence Curse. It says skyscrapers could destabilize the economy. But when we chose to start the Shanghai Tower project, it was in 2008 when the global economic crisis struck. We started on the rock bottom of a business cycle. There's reason to believe when the project is completed, the economy will get better. The land-saving skyscrapers have also been long criticized for harming the environment, especially the building process. Behind me is the construction site of the Shanghai Tower. Upon its completion in 2014, it will be the tallest building in China and also the second tallest in the world. The ambitious project embraces some green technology, aiming to bring a sustainable spirit to the country's construction industry. The tower's unique spiral form design and its intelligent skin will help the site overcome a number of major challenges. We want to reduce the impact on surrounding areas as much as possible. The spiral form reduces wind loads and captures rainwater, which is then used in the building's air conditioning and central heating. The building's facade is completely transparent and bioclimatic, with the space between the internal and external walls creating additional insulation and solar gain control. While the construction sector gets greener, China's skyscrapers are also more multifunctional than American ones. Instead of creating a single office building, Chinese high-rises like this Jinmao Tower have shopping malls on the lower floors, office room in the middle section, and luxury hotel rooms at the top. It's not just the building of such a complex that is expensive, the maintenance is also money-consuming. But the designer of the tower says developers and city planners are not worried about getting money back. They believe the high land prices will generate high returns because the height is a major attraction. The demand for space in Shanghai is big as the Chinese economy keeps expanding. You see, people have a natural tendency to want to be higher for better sites. A better site for the future might be a luxury to keep. And while the debate on the pros and cons of skyscrapers continues to carry on, we could only hope the good wishes for these high-rises do not turn into manic obsession that will exhaust the country's economic growth. Li Qiuyuan, CCTV, Shanghai. So what is behind the craze of the skyscraper boom? And for this, we're joined in the studio by reporter Li Qiuyuan. Good evening, Qiuyuan. Good evening. So other than Shanghai, we also see skyscrapers being built all over the country in cities like Wuhan and Wenzhou. Actually, the country is just looking like a construction site. What are the trends of some of the China's construction industry today? Well, China's skyscrapers are not only increasing in number and size, their geographical profile is also changing. As the country's building boom moved from first-tier cities to second-tier and third-tier cities. And not only that, we're also seeing these high-rises being built in some of the least expected places, like this one being built in Huaxi Village in East China's Jiangsu Province. This is the only rural village in the world with its own skyscraper. Mm -hmm. And when it's completed, this building will even be taller than the Chrysler Building in Manhattan. So, you know, despite the global economy downturn, we see China's building boom show no signs of slowing down. No signs whatsoever. And many are worried. Well, this kind of obsession about skyscraper could push the country downward uh, to a economic trash. 
if the property market goes uh, slump. Do you think we need that? many skyscrapers in China? Well, that is a very good question because building booms are essentially signs of excessive credit in the economy. And economists have pointed out that historically, skyscraper construction is correlated with easy credits, rising land prices, and excessive optimism. But often, by the time the buildings are finished, the economy has slipped right into recession. So, you know, they say there's an unhealthy relation between manic skyscraper building and economic crush. And because skyscrapers need a lot of support from economic activities, building without sufficient underlying demand could be really dangerous. And what's more, when it's come to what defines a livable city, it's really not how many skyscrapers it has. It's whether it's livable for people. A city for people thinks about how it can improve its environment, strengthen its economy, and enrich its culture. Take Shanghai, for example. The city is home to many traditional buildings and distinctive Li Nong alleys that house a great proportion of the city's population. But unfortunately, in the midst of rapid economic development, these alleyways have come under attack. While old brick blocks are being replaced by modern high-rises and shopping malls, some architects are calling for a stop to the deconstruction of Shanghai's architectural heritage. Take a look. Beneath imposing high-rises, you can still find a critical piece of the Shanghai jigsaw. Blocks of old Shanghai residences with crisscrossing lanes and alleys. Early 20th century Shukuman buildings preserve in a modern setting. The ancient architectural heritage has not only survived, but thrived. From old stone buildings to modern boutiques, hotels and restaurants, this is one of the hottest entertainment districts here in Shanghai and also one of the finest historical redevelopment plans in China. This is where East meets West, Old meets New. Ma Junzhe, a famous architect who co-designed the redevelopment blueprint of Xin Tian Di, is more realist than romantic when it comes to restoration. He believes a city for people is what makes up a livable city. I believe in a people-oriented approach, historical redevelopment projects should be carried out in conjunction with meeting the demand of people. I don't believe you should proclaim things dead and turn them into museums. I believe you should breathe life into places and make living areas where people can eat, drink and enjoy themselves. Already, Xin Tian Di has transformed nightlife in Shanghai. It has now become a celebration of fine food, entertainment and flashy consumer goods. Although some local historians are concerned that the gentrification of the old district would ruin its charm, the crowds in Shintindi seem to enjoy themselves just as much. It's a really nice contrast to, to, the, to the more modern areas uh, of the city, so it's, it's really beautiful to come here and see the, uh, some of the history and art and, and uh, some of the beauty uh, that's preserved in this area. I like here because um, it's very special, because a lot of old architectures with commercial environment. Ma Junzhe and his co-designers have set a new benchmark for style that is being fast replicated around China. But for some architects, the fast-paced modernization and city development is making preserving architectural heritage harder than ever. Tang Yuan is an expert in historical redevelopment field. She designed the restoration of the iconic Shanghai's Peace Hotel that has more than 100 years of history. For her, the rising demand for urban living space is the biggest concern. As the economy goes through rapid development, the population in Shanghai is growing so dramatically. The demand for new home and the city's population carrying capacity is far more than developed cities like Paris and London, and even Tokyo. It's hard to preserve old Shanghai-style apartment blocks Li Nong because these compact alleys simply can't meet the rising demand for living space. For architects like Ma and Tang, how to strike a balance between tradition and modernization while the country go through rapid economic development remains a difficult task. To them, Shanghai serves as not only the future of China's architecture industry, but also a cause worth fighting for in the protection of its unique and historical roots. Li Chouyuan, CCTV, Shanghai.